Good morning. Thank you uh, to everyone that came along to the first meal at Mill Men's Fellowship uh, yesterday down at the barrage. Uh, most importantly, we had some, uh, some good food to eat together and then uh, went for a quick walk just to say that we'd done that. Uh, reminder that that's every first Saturday of the month. Uh, so if you'd like to come along, please come along, bring a friend, fairly social, an opportunity to share some time with each other uh, and enjoy each other's company. After the meeting this morning, if someone would be able, or a few people would be able to help move some things back into the loft, uh, decorations, nativity stuff, Christmas bits and bobs, so a little bit of help after the meeting would be much appreciated with that. On Wednesday this week, there is Bible Fellowship here at the hall, 10.30 uh, in the morning, so come along and share some Bible Fellowship with each other. And then next Sunday, of our regular worship at 10 a.m., and then... 3 p.m. there is a divisional meeting uh, next Sunday, 3 till about 5. There's a notice on the board uh, and that's sent to one about divisional events next Sunday afternoon. On a Sunday evening, uh, various volunteers uh, help pick up uh, from Greg's, Greg's donate some of their food that we then use through the week to hand out. Uh, if anyone would be able to donate some time uh, on a Sunday evening about 5 o'clock, it means basically driving to Wellington Square picking up a couple of trays of food, dropping it off at the army, and then go home. So if you're local and you've got a car and you're able, uh, if you could come and speak to myself or to one of the officers after the meeting to put your name down to help with that uh, as it continues to grow, as our programme grows during the week. The flowers this morning are from Pauline uh, for her birthday and the memory of her mum's birthday. So we hope you enjoy those. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, good morning and Happy New Year. It's uh, good to see you. I uh, trust that uh, Christmas has gone well and uh, it was very busy in our house and uh, some peace and quiet now um, as we enter the new year. Won't be bad for a few days but then looking forward to seeing family again as soon as possible I'm sure. Um, we, uh, we start the year with a, a family service um, and so our YP sections are supporting us this morning and uh, that's going to be lovely. We also uh, um, are looking forward to the uh, enrolment of four adherents this morning. Um, that's uh, Amy and Will and Callum and Abigail. And uh, they're going to join me here on the platform a bit later in the meeting. Um, but... Uh, even as we uh, start our meeting, start thinking about them, start praying for them um, and thanking God for them. We thank God for our, our young people in the core, don't we? And uh, they are such an inspiration to us. And uh, we look forward to that moment in the meeting um, when we can recognise them as adherents today. Um, but we're going to start by singing, Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. You are one with us, Mary's son, cleansing our souls from all their sin, pouring your love and goodness in. Jesus, our love for you we sing, living Lord. We'll stand together and sing the verses through. Thank you.
third verse there that spoke about um, our commitment um, to, to the Lord. And, um, and just a reminder that next Sunday will be our Covenant Sunday and uh, there will be an opportunity to think about our place um, with God and our service um, for him here in the Salvation Army. And uh, so, uh, again, an encouragement over this next week to be thinking and praying about your relationship with the Lord and where you are within that relationship. Um, what are the things that might need to be strengthened? What are the things that you would like to aim for this coming year? And, um, and you will have opportunity next Sunday to make those commitments and to renew um, covenants um, that have been made. And maybe um, an opportunity for new decisions in people's lives. When we think about all of this, it's why we can join with the Apostle Paul when he spoke to the Corinthian church and he said to them, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And of course he was speaking about Jesus and the gift of Jesus um, to mankind. The Greek word um, that's used in that, uh, in that verse is only used on that one occasion in the New Testament. And um, we could also um, explain it as meaning unutterable, um, indescribable, unutterable. And it's the Apostles Paul attempt at trying to explain to the Christians in the Corinthian church, how words alone aren't sufficient to describe the magnitude of the gift that God has given to us through Jesus. I don't know about you, but uh, words quite often fail me. I don't know whether that's an age thing. Maybe I'm getting to the point in my life now that when I try to think of certain words, they sort of escape me and I have to stand there and think for a moment and sometimes have to come up with something um, not quite as good as what I wanted to say because that word that I really wanted to use just escapes me. But they say, don't they, that actions speak louder than words and really if we want to show how much Jesus means to us if we want to really express the magnitude of the gift that has been given to us within Jesus then it's through the way that we live our lives it's through the way that we act it's through the way that we treat other people. It's the example that we set as Christians. In a moment, Sandy's going to come and lead a prayer time for us. That's what your sweets are all about on your chairs. It was an opportunity for the officers to get rid of some of their Christmas... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Sandy will explain what that's all about for you in a minute. Uh, but to help us to settle our hearts and minds as we approach that prayer time, we're going to sing, give thanks with a grateful heart. This is the way that we show our appreciation for the gift of Jesus, isn't it? Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And so we're going to sing um, that, that song through once. Um, then Sandy's going to come and uh, lead the prayer time for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Thank you.
So for our prayer time this morning, we're going to use our sweets and we're going to link them to some epiphany traditions or thinkings. Um, we don't celebrate Epiphany Sunday, do we, in the Salvation Army? But a lot of the churches do, and um, it's celebrated a lot across the, around the world as well. And one of the traditions for Twelfth Night is that um, the, the house will be blessed. You would stand outside and you would write an Epiphany formula, which is the first two letters of the year, so it would be 20, and then it would be C plus M plus B plus the year, 24. The C... M and B are the names of the wise men. Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar. See, I can't even say it, can I? You said about words. That also translates in Latin to Christus, Mancienus, Benedict, which translates to English as, may Christ bless this house. And the crosses in between, the pluses, are our salvation. So if you have got a quality street, gold representing treasure, you are praying prayers of blessings. We're going to pray that God will come and bless this house at the start of this new year. In a couple of, in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to actually be doing some prayer walking around the building and praying in the individual rooms. But for this morning, if you've got a quality street, you are praying for the God to come in and bless this sacred space, his house for the year. If you've got a gold heart, then we're thinking about journeys. What sort of people are making journeys? What sort of people are going on long journeys? <laughs> Physical journeys. Think about journeys to work. Yeah, oh, journeys to school. Who's got a long journey to school? You're going to be making journeys to, back to school this week? Shops. shops, yeah. You're journeying to the shops, are you? I've got no money to go back to journey to the shops. But, you know, people, people, people across the world are making long journeys. Think of the people that are driving aid food supplies into countries that haven't got as much as we have. Think of people who are taking medical equipment into countries that are engulfed in war. Think of people who are trying to get out of situations, vulnerable situations, people, migrants who are trying to get into a, a safe place to live. And if, you have got, so if you've got a, a, a gold heart, we are praying for people who are making physical journeys. If you have got a red heart, who's got a red heart, sweet? We are thinking about people who are on spiritual journeys. We've got four youngsters, four beautiful young people who are going to be made adherents this morning. We had two lovely children who might be made junior soldiers before Christmas and another group are going to be starting their preparation very soon. Think about the spiritual journey that you're on. If you're section leaders, think of the spiritual journey that the team of people that you are working with are on that your section is on? What do you want for them for this year? The, prayer ev the divisional event next week is a divisional prayer event um, and our divisional leaders are trying to relaunch them. We've got a divisional prayer coordinator, me Michel, and you know the comment is if we have a band or a songsters or a music section into the division where the, the, the churches are full. But if we have a prayer event, there's hardly anybody that turns up. We're praying boldly this year. We've sent re prayer requests in for Stockton uh, every year God gives me a, a word to pray into and it's boldly this year. So I'm making my prayer request boldly to God and to the division for what we think our needs are in this call. But for this morning, we give thanks for everything that God has done for us in 2023, don't we? And we wait expectedly for the blessings and for the journey he's going to take us on in 2024. Now, I know... Some people find praying out loud not very easy at all. And you know, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. But the more we pray together, the, more, the, the easier it becomes. So we're going to sing Give Thanks again. And if you've got a quality street, shout out your blessing prayers for this place. If you've got a, a yellow heart then shout out your prayers for people who are journey, making journeys. It doesn't have to be a loud prayer. And if you've got a red heart, then you shout a prayer out for people who are on spiritual journeys, but particularly our four young people this morning. And then when it goes quiet, I will pray. All right, thanks. We'll do give thanks again, Andrew.
ask for more blessings upon blessings. And that people will annoy, annoy you in such a deeper and richer way. We pray this, Lord, without ceasing. Lord, well, we pray for those who are taking aid to different countries mm -hmm. for the planning that goes in far into the tower. And for whatever comes up on the roadside as they travel, they can keep them safe. And that what they take will be a benefit to those who receive. Father, we thank you for our adherence. Thank you for our help, Bill, Callum, and Amy. Thank you for what they've already offered in this church. Thank you for their talents. And thank you for the kind and generous young people that are. And Lord, we just want to pray for them as they go about their education and their work. And perhaps when they're in a situation where their Christianity is questioned in their church environment, Lord, we pray for these people. We pray for our young friends and our families. So God of love, we remember today on this Epiphany Sunday how wise men from the east came seeking our newborn king, how they reached the end of their journey and how they knelt in worship before the infant Jesus. Our prayer today is, Lord, that you would help us to learn from their example, that you, would, you will guide our footsteps and lead us closer to Jesus. We pray that you would teach us to continue faithfully on the path that you have set before us, remembering that truth faith involves a journey of discovery as well as arrival at a destination. We pray this year that you will teach us to seek your will resolutely, even when the way ahead is not clear for us to see. Lord, we pray that you would teach us to look at the world around us, to look at the community around us, and to recognise the signs through which you might be speaking to us. Lord, we ask today that you would teach us to keep on trusting you in your purpose, even when the response of others may cause us to doubt you. And Lord, we pray this year that you would teach us to offer to Jesus our wholehearted devotion, not simply our gifts, but our whole lives, given to you in joyful worship and grateful praise. Our prayer this morning is, Lord, is that you would guide our footsteps and lead us closer to Jesus. And we make these prayers in your precious name. Amen. So I would ask that you would not eat your sweets straight away. Take your sweet home, remember the theme that you are praying for, and use that theme for this week. And then also another thing I'd like you to do is to stand on your doorstep before you get home and bless your home. Some of you may do that regularly. I prayer walk our, ha our house regularly. But just stand together as a family or on your own and just bless your home that Christ would make it a blessing for others and for you as you live this year. We're going to listen now to the singing company.
We usually have George singing the, the solo on that one, don't we? <coughs> but uh, Katie's not too well this morning, so uh, he's helping his dad to look after her. Um, so we remember them. Sandy mentioned about uh, Epiphany. Um, Epiphany um, is the uh, sixth, falls on the 6th of uh, January. Um, that's the day when we're supposed to have 12 drummers drumming. Uh, for, for those of you who have heard of Epiphany, um, you will know already that it's uh, traditionally the day when we uh, think about the, the, the journey and celebrate the, uh, the, the journey of the wise men or the magi um, who brought their gifts to the baby Jesus. And, and that, is, that is correct to a certain point. Um, the word epiphany means manifestation or revelation. And it describes a moment when you suddenly understand or suddenly become conscious of something that is really important to you. <coughs> That moment when you have that realisation, that revelation of something that is really important to you. Within, within theology, the coming of the wise men is celebrated as the time that Jesus was revealed to the Gentiles. Um, showing us and giving us evidence that Jesus wasn't just for the Jews, wasn't just for the Christians... But Jesus came into the world for everybody, whoever we are. And so there's lots of long words there, isn't there? Like manifestation and revelation. Um, and uh, we've got to, well, I certainly have to remind myself that this is a, an all-age family service this morning. Um, and uh, when we start using words of those sorts. It doesn't really mean much to the children, does it? And so we've got a, a little video to help the children to understand something more about um, Epiphany. What is Epiphany Day? <coughs> the word Epiphany comes from the verb to appear. It is referred to in the New Testament of the Bible during the birth of Christ and the second coming following the resurrection. Epiphany is celebrated on January 6th by Roman Catholics, Lutherans, Anglicans, and Christians of other Western traditions. It is a Christian holiday primarily commemorating the Magi's or the Wise Men's visit to the baby Jesus and the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. The visitors. Three wise men in a land far away studied the night sky and were skilled astronomers. One night they saw a special star. It shone brightly and guided the men to the newborn baby Jesus. These men lived in the east and were probably from Persia, which is now called Iran. The star. The wise men were very clever and understood the religious writings that were there many years before. The writings told them that one day there would be a great star, and the star would mean that a new king had been born. The men decided to pack up their belongings and follow the star to wherever it led them. The journey. The journey would have been very long, so they probably traveled on camels, deserts, and over mountains. The star led them to the town of Bethlehem in Israel. The gifts. The star came to rest over the place where Jesus lay. The wise men brought expensive gifts for him and worshiped the new king. The Bible now mentions how many wise men there were, but because there were three gifts, people often think there must have been three wise men. 
The gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The Feast of the Epiphany is one of the church's oldest and most important feasts. For more information and resources related to the Epiphany, head to twinkle.com. There you go. So parents, when you get home, twinkle.com is the place to find out about Epiphany for your children. But I wondered this morning, so we're thinking about the wise men, aren't we, going on that journey. And I wondered what we might take if we were to go on a long journey. Um, it only tells us that the wise men took gifts for Jesus, doesn't it? It doesn't tell us about anything else that they might have taken with them. So I wondered this morning, young people, what you might take if you were going on a long journey. You'd take snacks with you. Why would you take snacks with you? Why would you take snacks? You're always hungry. What else would we take on a journey with us? More snacks. <laughs> Sweeties. Drinks. Why would we take drinks with us? We might get thirsty and we need to rehydrate ourselves, don't we, if we're going on a long journey? Sorry? Toilets. <laughs> okay, we're going to take the toilets with us. What might we need on a journey? iPad. We might need our iPad when we go on a journey. What else? What, we, what, what might we need if we go on a journey? A sick bag. A sick bag. <laughs> Oh, a change of clothes. A change of clothes? Well, you might need a change of clothes. A map? Someone said a map? Now, here's a question for you. If you were going on a long journey, what might you take to help you to remember Jesus? A camera? A Bible? Toilet. Another toilet! <laughs> I suppose if you're one of those people who sit there, you know, give me a book, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Now, here's the really special question this morning. If you were going on a journey to see Jesus, what would you take for him? If you were going on a journey. Sorry? Sunderland support, so they could be blessed. The Sunderland supporter. If we were going to see Jesus, what gift might we take with us? Some baby clothes and some nappy, some really practical things to help to help Mary looking after the baby. Blankets. Some blankets maybe to keep him warm. Blankets. More blankets. Some toys for, for Jesus to play with. Any other gifts that we might take for Jesus? A card? To say welcome to the world. Absolutely. These are good gifts to be taken to see Jesus. We started off, didn't we, by saying thank you for the indescribable gift. And maybe sometimes in our lives the best thing that we can take to Jesus is ourselves. Sometimes the best gift that we can give to Jesus are our lives. 
and that so sometimes takes special decisions and special commitments. And in just a moment, our four young people are going to come and join me on the platform to make public their decision to become adherent members here in Stockton. But before they do, we're going to sing Shine from the Inside Out. Shine! Shine! So this is one that we'll have to stand up with because there's going to be some actions Abigail and Callum to come and join me here on the platform. A real indicator of the health of any church is the, uh, the spiritual development of the people who make up the fellowship. And uh, that's not something that we can always see, is it? It's not something that is always obvious to us because it's something that happens within us slowly and gradually, um, sometimes over a long period of time. But of course, it's not the decision, um, it's not the decisions that we make about changes within membership um, that bring about that spiritual development. It's the spiritual development that brings us to that point where we decide to make decisions. And today it's a great privilege, a, a real privilege, for me to have these four young people stood on the platform with me. Abigail, Will, Callum and Amy have made the decision to take a step forward on their journey with God. Really, this, this signifies their movement from what has been the junior part of the church to joining the adults within our church. But it's about more than that for them. 
Because at a time when many other young people of a similar age are making decisions to actually walk away from church, to walk away from God, these four young people are wanting to make a decision that says, I want to be known as a Christian. I want to have somewhere where I can say, this is my church, my spiritual home. They're saying, I recognise that I'm on a journey of faith. And I want to know and learn more about God and Jesus. I want to deepen my relationship with the Lord. And that they're saying, we want somewhere where we can come to worship. And somewhere where we can live out our Christian service. And it's great news for us in Stockton that they've decided that this is the place where they want that to be. And this morning I want to say, mums and dads, family members, friends, core family, you ought to be immensely proud of these four young people. Because as Christian leaders, all we really want is that the people within our church are living authentic Christian lives. And to a certain extent, it doesn't, doesn't really matter what we call ourselves, whether we call ourselves soldiers or adherents or members. What is really important is that we are living authentic Christian lives. And we see that. We see that being worked out by these four young people. They're on that journey. The same as you're on that journey, the same as I'm on that journey. But I want to say thank you to the folks here at Stockton because this is what you're producing. Fine young people, fine young Christians. And, uh, and you know, in a few weeks' time when their picture appears in The Salvationist, there are going to be caught up and down this country <laughs> did, did, we, did we not tell you that, Bill? That's all. There are going to be caught up and down this country who look at their picture and are going to be so envious that in Stockton we have young adults who are making decisions about wanting to be closer and uh, wanting to follow Jesus. I also want to make it clear this morning as well that becoming an adherent member of the Salvation Army is more than wearing a badge. To be an adherent member of the Salvation Army is an indication that somebody is responding to God's call upon their lives. They're people who are saying that they have an experience of who Jesus is and that they want to follow him. Being an adherent member of the Salvation Army is an indication that worship is important within a person's life. But also that they want that fellowship with other Christians in order that, that they might be helped within their journey and are able to help others as we journey towards the Lord. And being an, an adherent member of the Salvation Army is about finding fulfilment in serving the purposes of God. It's the attitude that Paul speaks about 
in Romans 12 when he says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. In order to be an adherent member of the Salvation Army, you've got to be over 14. <laughs> and you've also got to be able to say that the Salvation Army is your only um, place of worship that you are connected to. And we have certificates for you here this morning. And I'm going to invite you to sign them. So, Callum, you get the... Uh, first, I've knocked your badges on the floor. Thank you. Amy, yours is next. Wait, it's on it. Sorry? Yeah, just where it says a dear and member. That's a clue. How do I put it why have you put it on? Have a go. I just want to leave it there because I've, I've got a sign okay. or something as well. Okay. William? <laughs> Did any of you guys want to say a word? Want to talk about this great decision you can all make? We're going to pray for these young people. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you because we see you working in so many different ways within our church. And uh, that excites us and it encourages us and it gives us motivation for the future. And so this morning as we see decisions being made by these four lovely young people, we thank you for them. We thank you for their individual characters. We thank you for their desire to want to know more about you and for the fact that they are saying that they want to dedicate their lives to you in this way. And so our prayer this morning is that, uh, Heavenly Father, that they would really feel and recognise the presence of your Holy Spirit with them in these days that they would know that you love them and that you are concerned for them. We pray that they would uh, find that ability to stay close to you so that even as they are finding their way in life in these times, that whatever journey they find life might take them on, that you will be a partner within that for them. <coughs> we think of other people in our core who are thinking about decisions in these days. And our prayer is that uh, you would continue to stay close to us and bless us as a congregation, as your church here in Stockton. Heavenly Father, show us all how to be more like Jesus. Amen. Let's welcome our new adieu. Okay.
<laughs> they're having a, they're having, if they had their phones, they'd be having a WhatsApp conversation just now. <laughs> Uh, uh, about who's going to say something and who's not going to say something, but I think they've decided that no, nobody's going to say anything. Brilliant. I think you summed up. I've Quite summed nicely. it all up really yeah. nicely. Thank you so much for that <laughs> encouragement this morning. You take your seats. Um, you, 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 uh, you, you can take badges if you want to. Did you want badges too? Yeah. Did you want badges? <laughs> <laughs> Will's got the one that says Home League on it. <laughs> when they were thinking about uh, their enrolment as adherents this morning, um, we asked if there was a special song that... Um, um, that the four of them would like us to sing. And, um, and they decided that they would like us to uh, sing Light of the World. You step down into darkness. And, um, and that's a real indication um, of the spiritual um, maturity of these four young people. Um, we could have had another action song, couldn't we? We could have done, you know... Our God is a great big God or something like that and had a bit of fun with it. Um, but actually what they've chosen is a real dedication song, a, re a song that really speaks about their relationship with the Lord. And uh, so we're going to sing, Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Thank you.
and the Wipey Band are going to play to us now. Thank you. was associated with uh, that tune that say, be still and know that I am God. And uh, within all our excitement and within all um, our busy lives, that's a really important place to be able to maintain for ourselves. Be still and know that I am God. And that's my prayer for each one of you as you go into a new year, that you would know that experience of uh, being confident of the Lord being close. Uh, we're going to take the offering. Um, young people, there's uh, some uh, colouring that you can do down here. We've got some crowns. Um, if you fancy being a king this morning, we've got some crowns and you can come and decorate the crowns if you want to. And, uh, and that'll give you opportunity to uh, get on with something that's interesting to you while uh, I uh, speak to the adults in just a few minutes' time. But we're taking the offering now, thank you.
tithes and our offerings this morning. We pray that you bless them so that they may help extend your kingdom in the coming year. Amen. So we turn to Matthew's Gospel and chapter 2 and starting to read at verse 1 for our Bible reading this morning. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will, be shepherd, who will shepherd my people Israel. When Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact, the exact time the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they, turned to their country, they returned to their country by another route. Amen. So, uh, as we prepare for God's word this morning, we sing, When Wise Men Came Seeking. Just two verses. When Wise Men Came Seeking. Thank you. So we recognised early, didn't we, that um, Epiphany um, celebrates the, uh, the journey of the Magi, the wise men, um, taking gifts to Jesus. But we also said that that was only partially correct. Um, that the fact is that um, Epiphany um, used to be celebrated in a, a more major way than Christmas was ever celebrated. In the days when it was a major celebration, it also um, highlighted the revelation of Jesus in his first miracle, uh, changing the water into wine at Cana, and also the, uh, the manifestation of Jesus as the Son of God at his baptism by John the Baptist. The, the fact that a baby was born in a manger, was completely unimportant compared with the things 
that proved to the world who that baby was. Jesus' birth would have had little significance if nobody knew who he was, if he were not revealed in some way. The authority of Jesus therefore came from the signs that he performed, the divine validation given by a voice descending as a dove at his baptism and through signs in the heavens that could be interpreted by the Gentiles. So we see there then that Epiphany celebrated the first signs that God gave to the world of who Jesus was. It was, it was as if God was saying, my people, this is the one. This is the one. And the response within the celebration of Epiphany was the church's way of saying, and we can never be the same again. This is the one. And because of Jesus, we can never be the same again. So here's the question for us this morning. Why doesn't anything epiph at epiphany anymore? Why doesn't anything epiph on epiphany anymore? Well, I suppose there could be several answers, couldn't there? But I think one of them is that, for the most part, we no longer expect Christ to be made manifest amongst us, do we? And it's a sign of the times, isn't it, that many Christians today have lost that sense of excitement and of expectation. The early church uh, celebrated Epiphany with the emphasis on God's present manifestations to us and the expectation of God's future and ultimate revelation. The point wasn't to remember history, but to remind it that God appears miraculously to us in places and in ways that we don't expect. And in that way, we can be prepared when God does it again. And we'll be able to recognise God's manifestation, God's revelation to us. When we think about this, it's helpful to notice that all the events celebrated at Epiphany took place outside of the established religious structures, in a stable with Gentiles, at a river with John the Baptist, a religious rebel, at a wedding reception where the guests are getting quite drunk. And often that is the way that God still appears at times when we least expect him to. In fact, possibly every moment of our day and in every place where we go. So if we want anything to epiph in our lives, we'd better begin to start expecting it and watching out for it. Um, last week, Sandy and I were expecting company in our house, and I can assure you, there was no chance we were going to miss their arrival. We had made preparations for our family to visit, and we were keeping an eye out for them. There was no chance that their manifestation at our front door would go unnoticed. Yet, how many of us expect God in that way? Do we prepare? For that matter, have we even invited Jesus to visit? Epiphany within our lives begins with prayer and ends with a warning. The prayer is one that tells God how much 
we would like him to visit our lives. How many times do we prepare for our day asking God to be revealed in the everyday tasks that we will attend to? How many times do we prepare for church by asking God to speak to us through the music, through the words of a sermon in those who sit around us? Friends, if we're not expecting company, they might well show up when we're out or too busy attending to another task. If we don't expect God to appear or to speak or to touch our heart, if we're not looking for God at every turn and listening for God in every voice, chances are we will be clueless as the guests at the wedding. So Epiphany needs to begin with expectant prayer. But as I said, it also ends with a warning. After the wise men had seen the child and given their gifts, God warns them in a dream not to return to King Herod. And so they go back to their own country by a different road. Don't go back the way you came, is the warning. And it it could well be one of the greatest truths in all scripture. Once God has been made manifest to us, we must never go back the way we came. When we leave that moment of, of epiphany, we leave with a warning from God. Things must be different now. And yet we come to church, sing our songs that declare the astounding news of what God has done for us in Jesus. We hear scripture that tells of the steadfast love of God. We hear what God expects of us. We hear of his mercy. We hear that we were created by God and for God. And yet so often we go back home in exactly the same direction as we came. We remain unchanged. Friends, even if I preach the best sermon you could ever hear, I can't force you to encounter God. I can point you towards that experience, but I can't make it happen. You have to have a willing spirit. You have to be looking. But God is there to be encountered. From the songs we sing, to the prayers we pray, to the music we hear, to the sermons that are preached, the ultimate purpose of all, of all of this, is to provide a place where it is easier to experience the epiphany of God. A time that is structured in such a way as to encourage people to open their eyes and to see the God who is here in our midst and tomorrow morning will be just the same because scripture shows and proves for us that Jesus can and will be found in the everyday experiences of life we just need to expect it expect it everywhere Get up in the morning wondering where it will occur and go to sleep listening for God's voice. Read your Bible expecting to hear God and come to worship open to receive him. But whatever we do, we must never ever go home by the same route that we arrived. We're going to close this morning by singing one of the uh, songs of, uh, that speak of manifestation of God being revealed to us. Wonderful counsellor, mighty God among us, everlasting father, prince who rules in peace. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. To those who walked in darkness, the light has come. We'll stand together and sing the verses through, thank you.
And in closing we say, let us look for Christ wherever we go. Let us never stop seeking, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this new year and evermore. Amen. Good morning and God bless you.